we'll look at Hebrews chapter 11. We really are going to skip through it in chunks. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11. I want to ask a question though. Who has faith? Okay, there's a number of hands that went up. There's a whole chunk of hands that did not go up. <laughs> Who has faith? In what? Oh. Yeah, that's a nice standard answer that we <laughs> quote in church. That's always helpful. But seriously, think about your faith level. Think about your trust level, just for a minute, in God. Who believes they're going to wake up tomorrow morning? Seriously, you go to bed tomorrow morning tonight, who actually just naturally thinks, yeah, I'm going to wake up in the morning. Unless you've got a heart problem. <laughs> well, next one. Well, it's not, his heart's about here. <laughs> that was a joke, clearly. Been on the journey with Andy, so... so. I was on the journey, actually, to the hospital. I got given a cup of tea by the way. That's quite... But seriously, just think for a minute. We actually don't think about faith much. Because we really don't. You, you naturally assume you're going you're gonna to be here in the next minute, don't you? Yeah? Just, that's the assumption. You assume gravity is going to hold you down. You don't think about it much, do you? You wake up, you put your feet out of bed, and you just assume gravity's going to be there, yes? You don't even think about gravity. Anybody thought about gravity recently? I mean, seriously, other than unless you're doing studies at school. Have you actually thought about gravity? This morning. You thought about it this morning, do you? When you wanted um, Michael to try and fly. I said he was going to do the floor. Oh, yes, the new floor. <laughs> By the way, they've laid down the DPM and self-leveling concrete. Ooh. So there's progression. Do not enter that room. Oh. <laughs> I'm being serious. There is a no entry sign. So only those authorised at the moment. Michael was authorised and Michael put one dirty, great, muddy, poor footprint right on it. Well done. I clearly was very loving and pastry type and just shouted at him. Wipe your feet! And he said, what everybody else is going to do? And I said, well, look, I've been in and out. I mean, there's no marks from me, is there? He said, you've got special shoes. I said, yeah, well, that's true. But <laughs> By Doc Martins, you have no problem. <coughs> Yeah, I want everybody to float across the... No. You do realise when you come to this church, you're no longer about to walk on the new flooring, don't you? You're going to have to get faith in floating. <laughs> but we don't think about it. We don't think about faith. And so then let's talk about faith in God for a minute. What faith do you have in God? What, 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 to what point, genuinely, does your faith rise in God? Come on, how far does it go? 100%. Sorry? 100%. 100%. 100% all the way, Edwin. Yeah. Completely to the end. Yeah. Okay? To the next problem. To the next yeah. problem. Yeah. Thank you for the honest yeah. answer. And, I'm not saying that Edwin's not honest, <laughs> but that's the much more, that's the more majority view, I would humbly suggest. Yes? Yeah. How far does your faith stretch to which point and which end? Depends on the day. Depends on the day. Thank you for another honest answer. If it's sunny, I bet your faith goes a little bit further than mine does. If it's a bit dull and cold and you've come from a really hot country and it is freezing, yeah? Yes, Tracy, yeah? <laughs> your faith probably doesn't quite... It's very good. Well, Timmy's become completely acclimatised now, haven't he, after 20 plus years? And he, he loves it. What, it's nearly 30? It's right, yeah, it's going well. But seriously, how far does your faith stretch? I bet it stretches to the things that you can see and touch and feel, I would humbly suggest. No? You reckon it goes beyond that? Good. I like being challenged. But till the next problem, and it's staring you in the face, tell me if your faith stretches beyond the problem that's in front of your face. Just for a minute. I, I want us to just be honest about ourselves. <coughs> I don't want us to have the Sunday morning <coughs> honesty that we have. 
which is, yeah, I think God's great and he's the best in the world, da, 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 da. and I have complete faith in God, because you do when you're in this room and we're together. It's when we walk out to real church, which is outside, wonder where our faith stretches there. Just a thought. <laughs> so, let's read from Hebrews 11. <coughs> faith is the confidence that we hope for will actually happen. I'll say that again. <coughs> Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. I want to just focus on that first verse for a minute. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen <coughs> gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Now, quick background in Hebrews, if you remember, this was a church that was under massive persecution, and the entire argument has been from the author of Hebrews, or the sermon, it was more of a sermon, is actually that Jesus is better than anything else. And actually the word better is always in there. Jesus is absolutely everything. He's the Nth degree is the great high priest that's forgiving your sins. He's, he's the all supreme, no matter what you see happening. He is everything. And that's the whole argument leading up to this point. Because they're under persecution. They've got their own friends and family saying, Oh, give up this Jesus malarkey. Come back to the Jewish faith. And we rely on that to others who have the same problem. Whether if you come from a Mus uh, an Islamic background or Hindu or whatever else, you'll have. Friends and family that still follow Allah or still follow the multiple thousands of Hindu gods or whatever else. And they're saying, give up this Jesus malarkey because your life is clearly not brilliant, is it? Because actually following Jesus is not always an easy route, is it? Is it? No. Do you remember me talking about a car? Yeah. We believe this car was, was from God, and, and, but we're not quite sure about the journey. car went back this week. Bear with me. But the relationship we've had with the dealer <coughs> is about a relationship of actually communicating the gospel. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Still believe the car was of God because it was about the journey with the dealer, not the end result <coughs> of having the car. <coughs> Come back to that later, maybe. So they undergate the persecution. So it gets to this point that it says, so faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things that we cannot see. So imagine you're under great persecution. And there are some members in our church here who will actually understand what it means to be truly under persecution as Christians. Where it's not so much that your job is threatened, but actually your very life. And when your life is very threatened, it's very hard to actually believe that sometimes that God is there, yes? Mm -hmm. Here in Hebrews, they're saying this is what faith is. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things that we cannot see. We have faith, we have assurance about something that we can't tangibly touch right now. We have faith, we have assurance that when Jesus promised there is a place for you in my Father's house, no matter what is going on, we hang on to that promise, yeah? That assurance, and it is an assurance, not an insurance, like a dodgy company that's trying to get out of it. It's Jesus saying, assurance, that's happening. And you hang on to that faith. Now I like this quote from Long. I'm just going to quote this. When the preacher... <coughs> names faith as the evidence of things we cannot see, he is describing what faith has. Not what faith is, what faith has. It is already, it already possesses in the present what God has promised for the future. So faith is, when I have faith in God, it, I already possess right now what God has promised me in the future. Going to be 
be a bit of a plagiarism here. I'm going to nick something that I heard on a conference because it resonated with me when I read this. Faith is saying, well, there's the future. I'm going to grab it from the future and bring it now and into the present. Does that make sense? We've been assured by God that we've got a future home with him. Yeah? Yeah. So when there's trouble coming your way, or grief, or hassle, you can grab that promise from the future that's, that's there already, and bring it now into your present. Because that future place that we're going to go to is where there's going to be peace, yes? Shalom. No more tears, no more pain. That's going to be there, yes? The ever-present, uh, we're going to live in the ever-presence of our living God, and know nothing else but his love, Yes? Um, I know I'm not in a big hall, but a bit of shouting amen would be really great. Right? So that's true? Do you actually believe that? No, no, let's be honest. Do you actually believe that? Yes. So, seriously, for yourself, just for a minute, think for yourself. Don't just say yes because everybody else is saying yes. But do you actually believe that in here? Not in here. Forget this. This is a waste of time. This is only good for exams at the moment. Do you actually believe it in here? Yes. Sometimes. Thank you, Emma. But be honest, it's not always sitting in here as that sense of peace. But it says here, if you can know that God loves you, and which he does, and you've got this assurance, you can grab that peace, that love, that assurance that's out there in the future and bring it into your present situation right now. It is something you can physically grab and take and put in here. With faith. With faith. Yeah. And the faith is, it's not us working at it. It's not us having to manufacture it. The faith is, well, God promised it, so it's got to be true. Because, as it says here in a minute, it says, um, though um, by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. By faith, you understand that God created gravity, don't you? Yes. And the only proof of that is the fact that you get up and you're rock solid on the floor. By faith, we assume that God, even though science explains how God did it, or how he sort of worked it all out, <coughs> science that actually still can't understand where it started from. And that's by faith that we say, and you, they just say, oh, you lot just put God in place. Well, yeah, that's what faith is. Because it's only God that did it anyway. So it's by faith that we believe that God created the universe. So why can't we not... By faith, believe the assurances and the promises that he's got for us in the future. And saying you can drag that from the future now into the present. Because sometimes things in the present seem overwhelming. They do seem overwhelming, but the point being we need to see beyond the present and make a point of looking to the future, and that's what faith is about. Part of reading the word of the Lord and listening to this, he's actually trying to stick it in here. That's what I've got to do. And I've got to remember that. So I just want to carry on with this for a minute. So in verse 2, and I skipped verse 2 deliberately, verse 2 through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. And then he goes from chapter uh, verse 4 to verse 31, listing great details of people's faith. He goes from Abel, Cain, well not Abel and Cain, but you know what I mean. He goes to Cain, he goes to Moses, he goes to Abraham, he goes to Noah building the ark, based on faith. I still to this day cracks me up. You think about it for a minute, you take Noah building an ark. Listen, the rain is coming, man. There's a flood coming. And Noah's going, okay, I'll take that word. Everybody else is ridiculing him. Everybody else is probably having a go at him. And he's building this whopping great big ark. Who's ever watched Evan Almighty? I can imagine that exactly how it was. So he lists these great details of people of faith and their great deeds. And we're not going to go through it all individually now. Because I actually want to skip to the good stuff. This is the good stuff. First... 32 onwards. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, 
David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. This is by faith. Bear with us. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. Their weakness was turned to strength. How many of us wake up in our own strength? Let's. We go about daily leading with our own strength. We might pray first thing this morning, but I lay under at one. At some point, the little trip to it goes, I can do this. <coughs> yeah? At some point through the day, your little trip to it goes, I can do this. I can negotiate this car. I can deal with my boss. <coughs> Their weakness was their own. So we praise Gideon. We praise King David. No end. Yet it was in his weakness that he was strong. Because he then relied not on him, <coughs> but on his faith in God and the assurances that God gave him. And also David, and I think one of his psalms was in today's reading, David draw on the faith and the assurance of what God has promised and pulled it into the present. When you read his psalms, um, let me try and see if it was that particular psalm. Who did that word life scripture reading this morning? Yeah, it's on David. I said to myself, I will watch what I do and not sin anymore. I'll hold my tongue. No, that's not the psalm it was this morning. Oh, yes, it is. Just a different reading. If you read his psalm, he goes on about how great God is and how amazing he is. And then he says, but hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cries for help. Don't ignore my tears from your guests. The traveller passing through as my ancestors were before me. Leave me alone so I can smile again before I'm gone and exist no more. And then he says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned me and heard my cry. <coughs> David, if you look at all his psalms, talks about the grief he's going through, but he's pulling through the promises from the future, and he pulls it into the present. And we can do the same. Amen? Amen. So it's in their weakness that they were strong. Anyway, they became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women receive their loved ones back again from the dead. And I read that little bit from 32 to 35 and go, yes, I want faith like that. I want to see mountains move. Swathes of armies being knocked down, yes? Watching your boss get completely knocked over in the spirit of the Lord, yeah? Who'd love to see their boss suddenly become a Christian there and on the spot? There should be a hand to the left being raised. Yeah? That can happen, folks. If you work for a Christian organisation and you're worried whether your boss is going to be a Christian or not, start panicking now. <laughs> but that can happen. Believe it or not, that can happen. The problem is we don't have the faith, I think, enough to pray into it. We almost do a light-hearted prayer. Does that make sense? faith to pull from the future. But then he changes in 35b. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. And others were killed with the sword. Now that's the not fun side of being a Christian. Isn't it? Yes. But that's the real reality of being a Christian. It is not always that God is going to sort out everything in one hit. And you're going to get the exact result you want. Let's go back to the car we've returned. I wanted this car. We wanted this car. We thought it was the car that was going to resolve our problems. 
What we didn't notice on the journey was the relationship we were having with the dealer, genuine, a real sense of God is in this conversation. We was never meant to have that car. It was about connecting with them. And we went, you know, minor grief over a car. And it is minor. Hear me carefully. But what I'm saying is, is that it's not always that God is going to heal someone. It doesn't mean your boss is always going to become a Christian there and then on the spot. There are two sides to every time walking in this life. But being a Christian and, 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 and having the faith and insurance that we have doesn't mean that everything's going to get sorted today. So I don't want us to sit there and I'm thinking that what we pull from the future into the present. What we can pull from the future is the shalom, the peace that God has promised us. That we can pull from the future most certainly. Yes, we can ask for healing and pray in faith. Yes, we can ask for people to be, our families to become Christians and pray that in faith. But we live in a truly busted and broken world. And we live in a world where people do not want to know Jesus. But we also live in a place where people do want to know Jesus. It's a real quandary, isn't it? I don't know if you notice. I sit there as a pastor going, oh, you know, it's like this all the time. But there's a reason for that, because he says here that some of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ were chained and put in prisons. They were whipped, they were killed by the sword. And that's happening even more today around the world. So I ask that question again. Where is your faith? Is it based on the promises of now or the promises of the future? Just leave that with you for a minute. Then it carried on. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. They were too good for this world. These great people of faith that were listed... And then these people that were chained, swipped, killed, slaughtered for their faith, they were too good for this world. The world probably looked at them as like complete and utter weirdos. Yeah? You know, when you profess you're a Christian, do you think that somebody's looked at you like you're a weirdo? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Is it nice being looked at like a weirdo? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. We don't like it, do we, when people look at us weird? Do we? No. 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 Do you like it when somebody stops talking to you because you're a Christian? No. No. Thanks for being here, that's true. <laughs> promises means that we we're going to be weird in this world Thank you, but we're actually going to be weird in this world we are meant to be weirdos in this world Can somebody please open that door I have turned this heating off but it is getting hot thank you ever so much thank you Margaret for we are called to be weird in this world. Just for a minute. You're called to not be liked in this world. We're called to be shunned in this world. Because we're no longer part of this world. We are too good for this world. Just think about it for a minute. We're... I know that's a shocker to all of you, isn't it? But we're too good for this world. Because this world is not our home. We are too good for this world. <laughs> so we're going to be rejected by people. We're going to be shunned. What we pull, and we're going to do that because we have a faith and an assurance in God's promises that's in the future. 
So now we're not worried about establishing our life here and now. As these list of people that had faith, they didn't care what other thoughts, mm -hmm. why they had their bubbles, but they had a faith in what God said. They did not have a life based on what was here. They had an assurance of a future, well actually they didn't, they didn't even go with that. They just went with God, and went, oh, that's a whole Old Testament thing, I'm not going into that now. But we have something better, as it says at the end of these verses. For God has something better in mind for us, so that we, they would not reach perfection without us. We have something better in mind. God has something better for us when his son Jesus died on that cross. So we're not to establish a life here. Does that make sense? We're not to settle here. We've actually got a better future place waiting for us. Amen? Amen. And, and, and we need to have faith in that belief and assurance as we live our daily life. Gonna leave that for a minute. So just think about it for a minute. You're too good for this world. <clears throat> there is more to life than this world. Yes? Do we live it really truly every day? Do I live it truly every day believing that? No. 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 But there is. And we are called to live beyond this world in our understanding and our faith. We are to believe the promises that are over there and pull it into our current life. I was, um, to prove that to you slightly, I was at a minister's meeting on Tuesday and it was really funny. We was in the, um, not my choice I hasten to add, it was a big wider thing. It was based around the turning actually. Um, you know, the turning that's coming. You know, the turning that I've talked about at the members' meeting. Yeah. The turning where the grace of God is pouring out onto the streets. The turning where we as a church agree to sign up and to go out in the presence of God. Yes? And portray, claim the, portray the gospel. Well, I'll come to that in a minute. Portray the gospel. Yes? Show people love the gospel. It's coming. I've got some training coming in, in, in March and I'll be coming back full of it for you all. We was at this at the Paddington Hilton. Yeah. Posh. We was just in the bar, don't worry. And, uh, and, and a whole load of them were drinking water and Diet Coke. <laughs> Notice I said a whole load of them. <laughs> so we're in this bar, you've got all these business people, and you've got people with money, clearly have money. Goodness me, I watched what some people were wearing. They were loaded! <laughs> and I saw what they had to eat, and I saw how much it cost on the menu. <laughs> That's my week's shopping bill gone down the pan. <laughs> and some of them were drinking like, 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 like bottles of wine. I'm thinking, goodness me. So this is lunchtime, okay? And I'm thinking, wowzers. So we're sitting there, and we're looking like a bunch of weirdos, because we're discussing Jesus quite loudly. And then at the end of this whole meeting, we decided to pray. So now normally, what normally happens, I don't know about you, but when you do public prayer in a cafe, you say, I'll pray for you, my friend, of cost of coffee. You're a bit quiet, aren't you? Yes, Lord. Try not to look like you're praying. Just try not to look like you're having a conversation. Yes, Lord. Or keep my eyes open. Don't want to look like my eyes are closed. I look like I'm having a conversation with a person. You know, I want to pray for healing. Well, you know, so I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know how this one's going to go. All of a sudden, you got past the Yingling going, Jesus! In the middle of the whole thing, that was it, we're all up and we were gone! You have people literally grabbing their suitcases. <laughs> you have some others going, What's going on? You had the bar staff going, oh. It was so funny, it was like literally, I almost was chopping a lemon. <laughs> So we had this uh, massive, uh, great day of prayer. Uh, uh, it was brilliant. It lasted all of about ten minutes, but we looked like weirdos. It was interesting enough when we sort of opened our eyes or stopped. I suddenly realised the entire area, which is about the size of the area where we are now, that got cleared. <laughs> and then you got me smiling. Now I'm wearing a collar, and I think they expect Anglican type. Not not I'm Anglican, but everybody thinks you're an Anglican when you wear a collar. I think they actually probably thought we were all going to be look quite little sheep as mouse. We're joking. <laughs> Anyway, the whole point being, we look like weirdos. 
And we're meant to be weird. We're not meant to be in this world. We're meant to stand out for all the good reasons. Now it says here in this thing in Hebrews, in faith they had a good reputation. But you know, they didn't have a good reputation then and there. They had a good reputation when people looked back at their life. That's when the good reputation really truly kicked in. It's after they died and you saw the achievements and that they were pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. If you read the whole Old Testament, what it goes on about. And I don't know about you, but I would like somebody to look back at my life when I'm no longer on this planet in the way it is now. And to go, and he's got a good reputation because of him following Jesus. Yes? yes. Would you like that? Yes. Not because I'm worried about what people think, but I'm more worried about that when I get there that Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant, come on in. And so that's the faith and assurance that we pull from the future into our present. Now, what am I banging on about this? Because I go back to the turning that I'm talking about. There was something that was said um, at the turning. I've only just remembered this. And it's ahead of the turning. It was really good. Uh, Yen Kuz, brilliant guy. He turned really down to earth. And he turned around and said, do you know something? I realised something. He said, we, we actually like to love people, do we not? Mm. You love everybody around you normally? Most of your family? <coughs> most. Most. Well, it's most. Mm. most. But we have a problem in this country. We don't like to offend people. You know, telling somebody that Jesus loves them, you're a bit worried about saying it in case you offend them? Mm. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's true. Yeah? You, you don't want to offend them, yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you know what Yinky said? It was a fantastic line. He came out, he said, problem is, you are offending them already by not telling them that Jesus loves them. <laughs> Think about it for a minute. You're offending somebody by not telling them that Jesus loves them. Because you're allowing them to walk to their eternal destruction. <laughs> It's a shocker. We've got this assurance and promise from over there, yeah? And that's why I asked you, do you believe it in your heart? Because if you believe in your heart, what are you going to want to do? You're going to want to pass it on to the next person, aren't you? If you actually believe that the promises of God over there, that he truly loves you and you've got a future home with him, I wouldn't want to hang on to that, would you? You know, if you've got the latest Alexia voice box, about how many of you actually go on about how brilliant that is? Come on. Oh, the stupid Amazon thing that you talk to and you go, what is it, Aki? Oh, no, you got one, that's what I'm asking. Yeah? You go, Alexa, and you, you talk to Alexa, and all the toilet roll, please, on Amazon for me, or something, yeah? How many of you go on about your technology and how exciting it is? Thanks. All right, some of you are slightly... Be careful, Warren, what you say next. I was in the pub yesterday afternoon with Joy, and the guy said, do you want this old-fashioned pint glass? And it was like a proper, you know, the proper dimple pint glass. I said, it's not old-fashioned. It's the proper glass. And I argued with him over the whole thing. Anyway, like, he thought he really offended me, what he had. But anyway. Point being, when you've got something new, and you want everybody else to know about it, you tell them, don't you? Yes. If it is something that's going to help your life, I don't know, let's say you, I don't know, you buy a new Hoover. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. Right, excellent. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> so you get a new Hoover and you, you've researched it, you've gone through the whole lot and you've decided that Dyson's too expensive. You've decided Dyson is too expensive. Yeah. Especially as he's leaving the UK now. It's too expensive, yeah. right? You've decided that, that the original Hoovers are a little bit old hat. So you've decided that that is brilliant, yeah? And it hoovers the floor really well, yeah? No, no am I not the only one? Samsung's better, isn't it? Oh, okay, right, let's go with iPhones as well. iPhone or Nokia? Right, right, you're bang on about it, how good it is, yeah? Come on, you go on about your hoover and you go, look, you should see the attachments it comes with. Look, and dust and clean and... <laughs> so, <laughs> and how it goes from hard floor to deep pile carpet, yeah? Who goes, come on, seriously, be up front. And if it's cordless, oh my life, you're telling all your, your friends how good it is, yeah? Seriously, what do you guys have conversations about then? <laughs> you talk about Jesus? Yes. Okay, or you're watching your favourite TV programme. Oh, oh, there's a new programme on Netflix or... Please tell me you have Netflix. Please tell me you have an Amazon stick. Who pays for their Skybox? Yeah, I'll say I don't do that. So, but think about it for a minute. All the good things and all the things that excite you, you go, yeah, I've got to tell, I can't wait to tell Auntie Doris or whatever. 
I can't wait to tell my work colleagues. I can't wait to tell my neighbours, yeah? Do you do that? Yes. 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 No. <laughs> Your life must be really... No. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> but I bet we do, because we're not going to look too weird. But what we need to tell people about the real love of Jesus and how he's released us <coughs> and the faith and the assurance that I hang on to, I bet that one we shut down just as quick. And we're portraying our brothers and sisters. We're portraying our friends and family. We are portraying, per, per portraying them and offending them. We do not tell them of this faith that we have an assurance in. quote long, this possession that we have, this assurance, is partly an inward reality, so this assurance is an inward reality that we have, yes? And it's partly an outward force. If we imbibe the reality of how Jesus loves us, it has to turn into an outward force of actually giving it away to others. I think we're at the stage where we actually have got to start giving this grace away, this, this assurance that we have, we've got to start giving it away to those around us. Actually giving it away. We've got to take it in, understand it for ourselves, and don't take forever trying to understand it because we won't until the day we die, but actually start believing that assurance truly in here and start saying, Do you know, I want I know, my best friend who I've known since school to know this. I've got to stop thinking just my example of my life is going to give them the gospel. Because it's not. You've got to start. I don't know what Hannah was going to preach, uh, talk about at the beginning of this morning. But we've got to start giving it on Sorry. Sorry. Amen? Amen. Sorry. As difficult as that is. So I would like to leave you with this moment. To so think about now, pulling that from the future right now, that assurance, that, 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 that guarantee, that complete promise that you've got a future home, and all of the promises that come with that, pull that now into your life now, into here, and then say, well, who do I want to give that away to? Close our eyes. Let's do that again. Lord Heavenly Father, thank you that your son, your son was willing to look like a weirdo for your kingdom. He was willing to be shunned. He was willing to be, not to die on a cross, but he was willing to walk <coughs> this world looking weird for you because he knew this wasn't his home. Mm. Help us, Lord, to live the same faith, the same promises that he had, and we have it even better than that. Help us, Lord, to be weirdos for you. Help us to have our faith and our confidence in you, not in what we see. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. 
to learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.